Good evening students and welcome to another session of the daily quiz by Baidu's exam prep IAS. Now before we start with the questions, here is a quick announcement. We have a free workshop for all the serious UPSC aspirants on how to score 110 plus marks in UPSC CSE prelims exam. It will stream live exclusively on the Baidu's exam prep app at 6 p.m. on 7th January. The registration link is available in the description, so do not forget to download the app and register for your workshop in order to clear your CSE prelims exam with flying colors. Now let us move on to our first question. What do you understand by sweet revolution? A. It is aimed at promoting sweet potato and sugarcane production. B. It aims to raise awareness regarding diabetes in the country. C. It aims to promote apiculture or bee farming in India. And D, it is a program by FSSAI to promote transparency in sugar content in food product labelings. So where did we get this question? The source is PIB, where Sri Manoj Kumar, who is the chairperson of Khadi and Village Industries Commission, he distributed boxes to beekeepers under the honey mission in Village Devra. Here he stated that beekeeping is the medium of sweet revolution. Now what exactly is sweet revolution? It is related to promotion of beekeeping that is apiculture in the country. It aims to increase the production of quality honey along with other apiculture products like beeswax, royal jelly and so on. The Khadi and Village Industries Commission has undertaken this responsibility for the revolution and in pursuance of that, even the government of India launched the National Beekeeping and Honey Mission in the year 2020. The major benefit of this mission of this revolution apart from providing an alternate means of income to the farmers is that it can also increase the productivity of crops due to pollen grain spread that is done by the bees. So what is the correct answer here? It is C. That is Sweet Revolution aims to promote apiculture or bee farming in the country. Now usually these revolutions in India like green revolution, yellow revolution, white or blue revolution, they are related to agriculture. So on the basis of that you could have easily eliminated these two options and then only option A and C will be available to choose from. So the correct answer is C. Now let's move on to our next question. Consider the following statements regarding cold waves. It is declared when the minimum temperature dips 4.5 to 6.4 degrees Celsius below the normal minimum temperatures and second it can also be declared when the minimum temperature of a place in the plain region goes below 4 degrees Celsius. Now we have to choose which of the statements are correct. Now this question has been taken from this article in the Indian Express which says that Delhi and the NCR region is currently facing a cold wave. Here it has been declared in the article that cold wave conditions are recorded by the IMD when minimum temperature is 4 degrees Celsius or lower. So that is why IMD has declared that Delhi is facing a cold wave as the temperature has dipped to 3 degree Celsius. Now here you can see what are the various criteria for declaration of cold waves as given by the IMD. So the first criteria is based on departure that is when the minimum temperature departs from the normal temperature by 4.5 to 6.4 degrees Celsius that is it is lesser than the normal temperature by this margin. It is considered as a severe cold wave when this minimum temperature departs by more than equal to 6.5 degrees Celsius. Also, based on the actual minimum temperature only for the plain regions, a cold wave can be declared when minimum temperature is less than equal to 4 degrees centigrade or a severe cold wave can be declared when this temperature is less than equal to 2 degrees 
centigrade. And for coastal regions, a cold wave can be declared when minimum temperature departure is less than or equal to 4.5 degrees Celsius or the actual minimum temperature is less than or equal to 15 degrees Celsius. So here the correct answer will be C that is both the statements are correct. Now we will move on to our third question that is from economy. The question says consider the following statements. One, inflation can be controlled by raising the interest provided on savings. Second, if inflation is high, the real rate of return will be low. Third, the RBI that is the Reserve Bank of India decides the interest rates for the small savings schemes. So the question is based on a explained article that has been published in the Indian Express which explains the consequences that the recent interest rate hike for small savings schemes done by the government will have on the various investors and the savers. Recently, the government of India increased the interest rates that will be provided on various small savings schemes except PPF and Sukanya Samriddhi scheme. And this has been done to reduce or to contain the rising inflation in the country. So, coming back to our question, what all will be the correct statements? The statement 1 will be correct. That is, inflation can be controlled by raising the interest because if the savings interest rate, they are higher, then people would want to keep their money within the banks or in other saving schemes. This means that people would have less liquid money with them to spend and this will reduce the demand of the products and this will bring down the prices of the products and the whole thing will lead to a reduction in the inflation rate in the economy. Now the statement too says that if inflation is high the real rate of return will be low. Now this statement is also correct. So how is the real rate of interest determined? It is determined by a formula that is 1 plus nominal rate of interest upon 1 plus inflation whole minus 1. In the simpler terms, there is a Fisher equation through which we can calculate the real rate of interest in approximate values by subtracting inflation from the nominal rate of interest. Now, if inflation is high, then the real rate of interest, no matter what the interest rate the bank is providing or the government is providing, will be low. Now, we have already seen in the article that it is not the RBI, but the government of India that determines the interest rates for the small saving schemes. So, this statement is incorrect. So, what is the correct answer? It is A. Now, we move on to our next question. Which of the following statements is are correct? The new education policy allows for any foreign university to open its campus in India. And the second statement is, these universities, they will have the autonomy to decide the admission process and the fee structure. So, we know that the new educational policy has introduced many transformative practices and innovations in the field of primary, secondary and the tertiary education sector. So, one of these was related to allowing the foreign universities to open their campuses in India. Recently, the UGC, the University Grants Commission, has unveiled the draft norms to allow the foreign universities to set up campuses in India. Now, under this foreign university with a rank among the top 500 global rankings or a foreign educational institute of repute and home jurisdiction can apply to UGC. So, any foreign university cannot apply for this permission. Only these specific universities can apply. Now, according to these draft norms, the universities will also get an autonomy to evolve their own admission processes and the criteria to admit both the domestic as well as the foreign students. They will also have the autonomy to decide their own fee structures within a reasonable and transparent format. So, 
This is a wrong statement. Any university cannot open its campus. This is a correct statement. These universities will have the autonomy to decide the admission processes and the fee structure according to the draft norms that are released by the UGC. So, the correct answer here is B. Let us now take a look at the next question which is a previous year question taken from 2016 based on art and culture. The question goes, with reference to the religious history of India, consider the following statements. 1. The concept of Bodhisattva is central to the Hinayan sect of Buddhism. 2nd. Bodhisattva is the compassionate one on his way to enlightenment. And the third statement, Bodhisattva delays achieving his own salvation to help all sentient beings on their path to it. So, which of the following statements are correct? So, Bodhisattva is the one who seeks the path of enlightenment and for this purpose, he leads a life of altruism. And when someone is leading a life of altruism, compassion becomes one of the greatest characteristic for that person. So, even for Bodhisattva, compassion is a very important part of their life, which helps him in sharing the sufferings of other in an empathetic manner. So, statement 2 is correct. Bodhisattva, because of his compassion, they delay their own salvation, their own happiness in order to help the other beings. So, statement 3 is also so correct. What about statement number one? The concept of Bodhisattva is not central to the Hinayan sect of Buddhism. So, this is a wrong statement. Can you comment as to which sect has Bodhisattva as a central part of its ideology and philosophy? So, type your answers in the comment box. So, what is the correct answer over here? It is B. Let us now come to our fact of the day. It is based on Water Vision at 2047. Now, why have we chosen this? It is because the first All India Annual State Ministers Conference on Water was held in Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh, where the focus was on developing a roadmap, developing a vision for water conservation and water use planning for the next 25 years, that is until 2047. So, this initiative is a part of a larger plan of India at 2047. So, why is this important? It is because by the year 2027, India is estimated to become the third biggest economy of the world. And we know that development is directly proportional to consumption of water and electricity. Now, add to that mix the unpredictability that is brought about by the climate change, which can greatly alter the availability of water across the country. According to the Union Minister of Jal Shakti, Sri Gajendra Singh Shekhavat, by the year 2047, our water requirement is likely to surpass the water availability and thus it becomes very necessary to involve all the sections of the government and the society, including the people, the civil society organizations and the NGOs and the private sector to chalk out a roadmap to ensure preparedness and contingency planning with regards to water resources of India. The Prime Minister of India, Mr. Modi, also emphasized on the importance of adopting circular economy for water conservation by focusing on water treatment and water recycling. He also lauded the achievements of the various schemes that have been undertaken in this regard like the Jal Jeevan mission, like Per Drop More Crop mission and also encouraged the states to develop waste treatment ecosystems based on the Namami Gange Yojana. The Prime Minister also urged here for the Gram Panchayats to prepare an action plan for the next five years where a roadmap that ranges from water supply to cleanliness and waste management should be considered, developed and adopted. 
So this is all about the daily quiz for today. I hope you liked the session. If you did, please like it, comment and share it and subscribe to our YouTube channel in order to get daily updates regarding the content we are providing on YouTube. So thank you so much and have a very good day.